In this lesson, we're going to talk about what a CRUD application is, as well as what are standard conventions when it comes to creating an API for a CRUD-based application. So CRUD is an acronym that represents the four main functions of an application. So any application, regardless of what it is, needs to be able to create things. So in our case, since we're building a, you know, a social media type application, we need to be able to create posts, make new posts. We need to be able to read posts. Uh, and so that includes, you know, retrieving all of the pre-existing posts. We need to be able to update a post if we want to implement that functionality. So if we decide to change what our post says, we would use the update functionality. And then finally, we need to be able to delete a post. And so the CRUD, that represents the four main functions of any CRUD-based application. So it's nothing more than an acronym. However, I created the slide so that you guys can understand what are standard conventions when it comes to creating an API for a CRUD-based application, because there are certain best practices that we need to follow. And so when it comes to naming the URL and the paths for each operation, there's a standard convention. And the first thing that I want to point out is since we're working with posts, it makes sense to name all of the URLs, all the paths uh, with slash posts. And it's important that you use the plural form of posts. You don't want to do slash post. You want to do slash posts as in plural. This is standard convention for APIs. And if we were working with users and we want to do, be able to create, read, update, and delete users, it wouldn't be slash user. It would be slash users. So always use the plural. That's standard convention. Now, when it comes to creating a post, right, that's always going to be a post request. So we've got the create functionality right here. And we can see that we have to send a post request. Standard convention. Anytime you want to create an entity, it's going to be a post request. And the URL or the path for that specific request is always going to be slash post in this case. And if you want to see what that looks like for the decorator in Fast API, it's pretty simple. You just do app.post slash post. So this is something you guys already know. Now, when it comes to read functionality, which would be you know reading or retrieving pre-existing posts, there's actually two different path operations we're going to create. So the first one is going to be slash posts. And this is going to be for retrieving either all of the posts or multiple posts, depending on what filter that we use. And so when it comes to retrieving information uh, from a database or anything like that, retrieving data, it's always going to be a get operation. So you send a get request to slash posts. And if you want to see what that face uh, the decorator on FastAP would look like, it's just app.get slash posts. Once again, we already have this set up in our application so far. However, there's also going to be another path operation for reading, right? And that's if you want to get one individual post. So if we want to get detailed information about one specific post, we're going to send a get request to slash posts slash, and then we've got this ID right here. So anytime you create something, uh, what's going to happen is uh, anytime you add something to a database, the database is going to give it that specific item, a unique identifier so that we can uniquely identify that specific entry. And so if I want to get detailed information about a specific post, I would just send a request to slash posts and then pass the ID of that specific post I'm interested in. So that's what this ID represents. And within Fast API, if you want to see what that actually looks like, you would just do app.get slash posts, and then you do curly braces and then ID. And that'll allow you to extract the ID from the specific URL of the request. And then we can, you know, take that URL, uh, sorry, take that ID and then, you know, send it out to our database so that we can retrieve the information. So there's always going to be two specific path operations for read functionality. Then we have update. Uh, so this would involve updating uh, a pre-existing post. So maybe we you know, posted out something and then we realized we said something offensive and we want to update it before anyone takes a screenshot of it. Now, when it comes to updating, right, there's two different HTTP methods that we can use. We can use put or patch, and it's really a matter of user preference. The only difference is that I, want to, I don't want to spend too much time on it is that when we use put, that you, the idea is that you pass all of the information for updating it. So all of the fields have to be sent. Um, to the to the API server, whereas a patch, we can just send just the specific field that we want to change. So put, you want to change the entire thing, you have to pass every, every field, even if it's going to be the same, and most fields don't change. Whereas a patch, we would just change the one specific field. So as an example, uh, as a, you know, if we're working with users, actually, if we're working with posts, and let's say I wanted to change the title, all right, I want to update the title of a post, if I used a put request, I'd have to give the new title, and I would have to give the pre existing content right? Because the put, uh, the idea behind put is that you have to provide all of the same information so that we can, on the back end, just take all the information and then update the entity. Whereas a patch operation, I can just send the title 
And then my backend should know how to just update that one field. We're going to stick with put, I believe, uh, in our application. But really, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It's just a matter of user preference. But with update, just like when it comes to retrieving one specific post, we have to pass in the ID so that we know which specific post we want to update. And for the decorator in Fast API, the only thing that we change is it's going to be app.put. Uh, and then we can pass in the ID like we did before. And then finally, we have delete. So if you want to delete a post, once again, you're going to send a delete request. So that the HTTP verb is going to be delete. And then we have to pass in the specific ID of the post as well. And then this is what the Fast API um, decorator is going to look like. So it's actually not that hard. It's fairly simple. And you'll see that once you create one CRUD API, creating another one is almost a matter of copying and pasting, really. Uh, and so in the next video, we're going to make a few changes to our API so that we can make sure that we follow uh, this naming convention. Because right now, I believe when it comes to creating a post, instead of just using slash post, we called it slash create post, which once again is not following best practice. So we'll update that in the next video.